Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another example of an interesting object for which we have to find a moment of inertia. It's a baton, and batons are usually shaped with a central bar and maybe a little knob on each end. Make it interesting. And so in this case, the length of this baton, the length is equal to 60 centimeters. The mass of the central part of the baton, the bar, is equal to 200 grams, and the mass of each end is equal to 50 grams. So, assuming that the baton is twirled about a point at its center, like this, what will be the moment of inertia? And so you can say that the moment of inertia total of this bar is equal to the moment of inertia uh, of the bar plus twice the moment of inertia of each knob. Since there's two of them, we'll just multiply the moment of inertia of one times two to get the total like that. All right, now, what is the moment of inertia of the bar? Well, it's a solid bar that's rotating about its central point, so the moment of inertia is 1 twelfth the mass of the bar, so I'll call that m, uh, times the length of the bar, l squared. So that's the moment of inertia, uh, 1 twelfth, I said, I wrote 1 half and I meant 1 twelfth. So 1 twelfth, the mass times the length of the bar squared. Now we have the knobs on each side, so that would be plus 2 times uh, the mass of each knob times r squared, the radius of its rotational motion. And the radius of its rotational motion would be half the length of the baton. All right. So that's the moment of inertia of a single knob multiplied times 2. And again, all the mass is located at the very end away from the point of rotation, so therefore it's mr squared. So replacing r by l over 2, this cannot be written as 1 twelfth, ml squared plus 2m times l over 2 squared. Squaring that, we get this is equal to 1 twelfth ml squared plus 2m times l squared over 4. And of course, that can then be written as 1 twelfth ml squared plus 1 half ml squared, little m for the mass of the knobs at the end, big M for the mass of the bar, and now all I have to do is plug in the numbers. So we have 1 twelfth. The mass of the uh, bar, uh, that's 200 grams converted to kilograms, that would be 0 0.2 kilograms, always use standard units, and then the length of the bar is 60 centimeters, that would be 0.6 meters, Oop, I forgot my units here, don't want to do that. So meters squared, so that would be the moment of inertia of the bar plus one-half ml squared, that's the moment of inertia of both knobs at the end, so that would be plus one-half the mass of a knob, which is 0.05 kilograms, converted to kilograms, times the length, which is 0.6 meters, and we square that. All right, now we're ready uh, to calculate what that is with our calculator. So we have 0.6 squared times 0.2, and we divide that by 12. Equals, and that would be equal to 0.006 kilogram meter squared plus, doing the next one, we get 0.6 squared times 0.05, and divided by 2 equals, and this is a 0.009 kilogram meters squared. Notice that the moment of inertia of the two knobs at the end, even though they're much lighter in mass, is actually larger than the moment of inertia of the bar. And that helps stable the motion of the bar. So that's actually done intentionally to make it easier to twirl it around and to make it more stable. Then we add those two together, and so this would be 0 0.015 kilogram meter squared, which is the moment of inertia of our baton. And that's how we do that. Remember, what you do is you find the moment of inertia of each piece independently. Notice that these are symmetric. They're the same distance, same mass, so we can just simply double the moment of inertia of each of the ends, and then we take the moment of inertia of the bar, simply add it together algebraically, and there's the sum. And that's how you find the moment of inertia of any object.